India has made history by becoming the first nation to successfully land a spacecraft on the far side of the moon. The Chandrayaan-3 mission launched on July 14th and landed on the lunar south pole on August 23rd. The Chandrayaan-3 has spent the last three weeks uncovering the secrets of the moon's dark and mysterious side. But what has Chandrayaan-3 discovered? Join us as we explain everything the Chandrayaan-3 moon lander has uncovered so far. Chandrayaan, which means moon vehicle, is the latest attempt by India to explore the moon following the previous two missions, Chandrayaan-1 and Chandrayaan-2. It consists of a lander and a rover, which are designed to land on the lunar south pole region and conduct scientific experiments. The first Chandrayaan mission, Chandrayaan-1, was launched in 2008 and orbited the moon for about a year. It carried 11 scientific instruments from India and other countries and made several important discoveries, the most significant being the presence of water molecules on the lunar surface. The second Chandrayaan mission, Chandrayaan-2, was launched in 2019. It was supposed to land near the lunar south pole on September 6, 2019, but they lost contact with the ground station during the final descent phase. It is believed that they crashed due to a technical glitch in the lander's guidance system. The lunar south pole has been a region of great scientific interest as it is thought to contain large amounts of water in the form of ice and permanently shadowed craters. Water is a valuable resource for future human exploration and colonization of the moon, and the first country to set up a base here has the best chance of controlling this vital resource. The Chandrayaan-3 mission is part of India's ambitious space program, which has launched over 100 satellites in one rocket, sent an orbiter to Mars, and tested an anti-satellite weapon. But since landing, there have been unexpected discoveries. One of these discoveries was the first ever measurement of the ionosphere of the moon by a probe on board the Vikram lander. The ionosphere is a layer of electrically charged plasma that surrounds the surface of a celestial body, and it is influenced by solar radiation and magnetic fields. The ionosphere of the moon is of interest to scientists because it can provide clues about the lunar environment and history, as well as affect the communication and navigation systems of future lunar missions. The probe, named Radio Anatomy of Moon-Bound Hypersensitive Ionosphere and Atmosphere, used a radio wave technique to measure the density and temperature of the lunar ionosphere near the South Pole, where the Vikram lander attempted to land. The probe transmitted radio signals at different frequencies and measured how they were reflected by the plasma layer. The data collected by the probe was relayed to the Chandrayaan-3 orbiter, which is still orbiting the moon and sending back information. According to a report by the Indian Space Research Organization, the lunar ionosphere is relatively sparse compared to that of Earth. The probe detected a density of about 5 million to 30 million electrons per cubic meter in the 100-kilometer thick plasma layer. This is much lower than the peak density of about 1 billion electrons per cubic centimeter in Earth's upper atmosphere. The density of the lunar ionosphere also seems to vary with the lunar day cycle which is about 29 Earth days long. An ISRO scientist analyzing the data told Nature that this variation could be due to changes in solar radiation and temperature. The density of the ionosphere has implications for lunar communication and navigation systems, especially if humans were to establish a permanent presence on the Moon. The higher the electron density, the longer radio signals take to travel through the ionosphere which could cause delays or distortions in transmission. However, the ISRO scientist said that the sparse plasma of the lunar ionosphere means that potential delays would be minimal and would not pose a problem for transmission. The scientist also said that more data and analysis are needed to understand the dynamics and characteristics of the lunar ionosphere. It also discovered something important about how the moon's temperature works. The soil on the moon is a valuable resource for building structures there, but to use it, we need to know more about its properties, such as how hot or cold it is and how well it conducts heat. That's why the Chandrayaan-3 lander has a special device to measure the temperature of the lunar soil at different depths. 
Anil Bardwaj, who is the director of a research lab in India, says this device will help us understand how to use the soil for construction. The device has 10 sensors that can go from 10 centimeters below the surface of the moon. The data from the device shows that the soil is much cooler when you go deeper. For example, at 8 centimeters deep, the soil is about 60 degrees Celsius cooler than at the surface. Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Paul Hain says this is because the heat from the sun does not go down very far in the soil. He says it is like when you dig a hole in the sand at the beach and find cooler sand inside. The data also shows that the surface of the moon is warmer than what another spacecraft from NASA measured in 2009. Haynes says this could be because of different locations or times of the day. He said the temperatures are far too warm for water ice to be stable. He also explained that water converts from solid to gas at a very low temperature in the vacuum of space at about minus 160 degrees Celsius. Chandrayaan 3's data indicate temperatures warmer than minus 10 degrees Celsius at all depths sampled. Further down, we expect temperatures to flatten out at close to the average surface temperature of about minus 80 degrees Celsius, says Hain. The Chandrayaan-3 also discovered a moonquake. These vibrations can tell us about the structure and history of the moon, as well as the possible sources of energy that caused them. The seismograph on the lander has recorded many vibrations since it landed on the moon, but one of them was especially intriguing. It was a very small vibration that only lasted for four seconds and then faded away. The scientists who are analyzing the data from the seismograph are curious about what caused this vibration. They have two possible explanations, a small moonquake or a tiny meteorite impact. A moonquake is an earthquake on the moon which happens when rocks inside the moon shift or crack due to internal or external forces. Some of these forces could be the gravitational pull of the Earth and the Sun, the cooling and shrinking of the moon's interior, or the impact of other objects on the moon's surface. Moonquakes are usually very weak and rare, but they can last for a long time, sometimes for hours. A meteorite impact is when a small piece of rock or metal from space hits the moon's surface at a high speed. This creates a crater and ejects dust and debris into the air. Meteorite impacts are more common and stronger than moonquakes, but they are also very brief and localized. Mark Norman, a scientist who is a planetary geochemist at the Australian National University in Canberra, says that this vibration could either be a moonquake or a meteorite impact based on its duration and intensity. He says that more data and analysis are needed to confirm which one it was. The scientists in India who are in charge of the Chandrayaan-3 mission are working hard to find out more about this mysterious vibration and what it could tell us about the moon. Such perturbations are expected on the moon. Small impacts and local tectonic adjustments related to tidal forces are common on the moon but we really need a global seismic network on the moon and longer-term observations to understand the significance of any particular event," says Norman. The presence of sulfur on the moon was confirmed. According to further reports by ISRO, testing by the rover unambiguously confirms the presence of sulfur in the lunar surface near the South Pole. It also found aluminum, silicon, calcium, and iron, among other elements. Sulfur is very interesting because it usually goes away when it gets hot. But scientists think that the moon was very hot when it was young, and it had a layer of melted rock on top. The sulfur could have been part of that rock, and it could tell us how the moon cooled down and became solid. Bardwaj, who is the director of a research lab in India, says this is why finding sulfur is very important. But there is another possibility. The sulfur could have come from space rocks that hit the moon. These space rocks are called asteroids, and they can make craters and dust on the moon. The scientists in India who are in charge of the mission want to compare their findings with those of other missions from the United States. They want to understand better what the moon is made of and how it was formed. Right now, moon lander Vikram and robotic rover Pragyan have been told to go to sleep, but ISRO hopes to awaken them at lunar dawn on September 22nd so we might see even more discoveries. What do you think about this? Let us know down in the comments section.